Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday morning to you. Thank you for joining me for prayer and devotion. We have many prayer requests to take before the Lord this morning, and I want to get right into sharing those with you. We need to pray for Carmen's brother this morning. He is currently hospitalized and needing prayer for restored breathing and lung function. And others with lung and respiratory issues include Rue, who is needing a double lung retransplant surgery, and also Kendra Ortiz and Robbie Northrup, who suffer with COPD. Sister Judy Williams' mother is scheduled for removal of a skin cancer from her nose, requiring skin grafting that's going to take place on Monday morning. So let's be holding her up in prayer uh, throughout the weekend. Nicole needs prayer for her general health. Others who have been sick this week and needing a healing touch include Sandra Landers, Cheryl Lachance, Peggy Buford, Regina Marlin, the Williams family, uh, including Michael, Rebecca, and her fiance Gary, and also Anthony and Ginger. Elder brother and sister Perkins are needing our continued prayers for strength and encouragement. We need to pray for James Graham and his family. His grandfather has been on hospice for several weeks. Um, we have um, some with pregnancy issues. Alyssa will be going to the hospital on the 27th for labor induction, and her child has uh, crossed ventricles and is going to require heart surgery as soon as he is born. Uh, Tasha Ray has been experiencing some complications in her uh, pregnancy early on and needs our continued prayers. And uh, Sally Waller's daughter, who we reported to yesterday morning, was going in for labor induction. Uh, that did happen yesterday. The child has still not arrived as of this morning. Um, Sally said that she is at a seven right now. So let's pray that all will go well today and that we'll have a good report to share with you uh, regarding that. We have um, Tim Workman, Beulah Ziegler, Russ, and Ron Bryant all battling Parkinson's disease. Leslie Pride and Lana Taylor suffer with dementia. Cheryl Lachance, Brother Pulliam, Tim Workman, Emily Stanley, myself, uh, J.R. Johnson, Christian Carr, and Brother and Sister Dornbach's son all are dealing with diabetes. Uh, Terry Adams, Michael Parrott, Tammy Lawson, Britt Moore, and James Graham have back and spine problems. Uh, Bam, uh, Pam Pulliam's daughter, Jenny, has osteoporosis of the spine and hips. We need to be praying uh, for her. Dorinda Shepard has a broken shoulder and is recovering from a knee surgery. Gary Shepard is needing to lose weight in order to have a knee surgery. Mary McPeak is dealing with shingles. Uh, Reverend Paul and Darla Brochu in the nation of France. Ben Moore in Nashville. Jackie and Sharon Wilkerson. Uh, in Tennessee, the nation of Chile, all dealing with uh, COVID right now. And I'm sure there are other nations uh, that are uh, battling right now and not in a good spot with the COVID situation. But Brother Dan Barkley specifically requested prayer for his um, field of labor there in Chile. Those who are battling cancer, Alicia Miles Piero, Marsha Moore's family member, Wanda Barnes, Michael Boland, Robert Wicks, Diane Escher, David Harris, Claire, Kim Stinson, Josh Soberg, Brother Kirk, Lisa Workman, Kathy Bloss, Lydia, Edie Percival, Christy Smith, Ari Bowers, Versi Gibbs, Brother Anthony Trimble, Evelyn Marshall, John Fitzgerald, Dwayne Lewis, and a friend of Terry Adams, Lorelei, Jenna, and Tucker, and you continue these three children, uh, continue to remember these three children who are going through cancer treatments as well. Abram Page, a child born with GNA01 disorder. Abel Ray, uh, suffering from PKU syndrome. Uh, Ellie May, a little girl who sustained injuries in a sledding accident. And baby Elsie, who has heart issues. Uh, Kenny Prenzel has a weak heart. He just learned that recently. We need to pray for Kenny and also pray for his uh, spiritual needs today. Pastor Del Holman's sister, Vicki Medley, has had a lot of health problems and most recently suffered a brain bleed and uh, was taken to the hospital for that. Jen Marlin needs healing of dystonia and also is facing an upcoming neck and back surgery in the near future. 
Brother Marty DeLott and Brother Riley March want to continue to pray for them and pray against MS on their behalf. Marsha Moore needs healing of chronic stomach issues, high blood pressure, and experiences headaches quite often. Others with stomach issues include Terry Adams and Michael Parrott. Sister Mara Sullivan has an autoimmune disorder. We have many spiritual needs to pray about today. Josiah, Cheryl's family member, Pam Poyam's children, Mark and Caitlin, Beulah's family, Carmen's daughter Grace, Barbara Owens, Haley, Evie, Rose, Carl, and Connor are needing salvation. Marsha Moore's children and granddaughter, uh, our Puxico community, is in need of a great revival. Lori Arbo's mother, Art Chandler, our Mingo Job Corps students and alumni, Judy and Mike Williams' daughter Jennifer, Judy's brother Lewis, Jennifer and Brenda's family, Tasha Ray's husband Adam and her sister Heather, Terry Adams' children, Debbie's daughter Jamie and family, as well as her niece, Peggy Fiedler and her family, and Caroline Sexton's family. When we mention these spiritual needs, um, there are so many different things to pray about. Some of our people on this list are needing salvation. Others are needing uh, deliverance from some issue in their life. And some are just needing to be encouraged uh, in their faith. Some need to be restored to the faith. And uh, we just put all those needs together. And the Lord knows each specific situation. We have family issues going on that we need to pray about for Annette and Dave who have been having struggles in their marriage. Grace's best friend's parents are going through divorce right now. Brother and sister Woody's family uh, need prayers for comfort, healing, and restoration. Marsha Moore's family needs prayer as they deal with the situation uh, within their family. Debbie Biddick's daughters Jessica and Jamie need prayer for their relationships, and we continue to pray for Angela Schweitzer's family, and just so thankful uh, to see what God is doing in their lives uh, each and every week. And uh, I pray that they're encouraged today as they continue to work through uh, all the things that are just part of life that you have to deal with. But we're so proud of Angela and, uh, and her family and thankful for what God's doing for them. We have some special needs to pray about this morning. Uh, Sister Carol Dixon has been moving, and uh, this is the only home that um, she's known in her married life, and of course she lost her husband some time back and uh, now is in the process of moving out of that family home. This is a great adjustment for her. Our heart goes out to her this morning and our prayers as well. Elizabeth Riggins' son Patrick needs our continued prayers. Dalton Stewart needs deliverance from addiction and restoration uh, in his body from damage that was caused by substance abuse. Nathan is battling depression and there's a special request this morning for the Stewart family that we would remember them in our prayers. Well, as I said in the opening line this morning, happy Friday to all of you. And I specifically want to welcome those who are watching live right now. Carmen, Brenda, Judy, Marcia, Kristen. So good to have each and every one of you um, praying alongside me today. And uh, I appreciate so much those of you who will also be watching this at various times throughout the day and praying along with this video. Uh, this morning I want to talk to you um, one last time uh, in this series about the blood of Jesus. And I want to go back and really emphasize uh, this morning the connection between the word and the blood, a very, very important connection and so important as we continue to live for God. Uh, the word is key in the work of the blood in our lives as we continue to walk with God. And uh, John pointed this out to us uh, in his teaching in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 6 is where I'll begin reading. I guess we'll read down through about verse um, 8 or 9. But he says, if we say that we have fellowship with him, God, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, this is one of the most powerful scriptures you could ever get a hold of. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, 
we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. And we need that continual cleansing. And that ETH suffix, it denotes a continued work. It's, it's not something that just happened one time, but all the imperfections in my life, if I walk in the light, understanding that he is in the light, then it, it uh, facilitates fellowship between the believers and this special work of the blood is able to happen. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us continually from all sin. Well, you may say, well, what sin? I repented. I, uh, I was baptized. I received the Holy Spirit. I've been born again. Uh, the blood has taken care of all that. But the next verse says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. When I got saved, I didn't become perfect, but God imputed that perfect record of Christ to me. But now he begins to show us the relationship between the word and the blood. And I'm going to uh, talk about it a little more in detail here in just a moment. But he said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now let's go back to that phrase, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light. Because that's the key to the continual cleansing of the blood in our lives. Thy word, David said in Psalm 119. The psalmist said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If we walk in the light, if we walk in the word, if we continue in that understanding that he himself is in that light, then the blood of Jesus can continue its work of perfection in our lives. Thy word, the word and the blood are forever connected. And we understand that the light God is light. In him is no darkness at all. So whatever light that we have, he is in that light, and we are to abide and continue in that light. The psalmist said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. That refers to um, immediate light that just is right around you. If you're holding up a lamp and you're walking outside in the dark, there's not much light as far as seeing off into the distance. It's just right there around your feet. But if you'll walk in that light, understanding that he is in that light, then the blood of Jesus is going to continue to do its work. And sometimes the word is a light unto our path, a picture being like the headlights on a car. Sometimes the word shows us things off in the distance and we see things uh, clearly that are not just right around us. But whatever light that we have, whatever God shows us in his word, we must walk in that because he is in that light. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so we don't take the word lightly today. Don't ever make the mistake of just saying, well, the blood's got me covered and everything's fine. Yes, it is, if I continue in the word. Amen. The word and the blood are connected the blood seals the covenant, but the covenant itself is based upon word and what God has declared. Well, I hope that helps you today, and I know it certainly has helped me. Amen. I want to continue to walk in the light, and my confidence in my relationship with God is based upon those things, the word and the blood, and their forever connectedness. Let's go to prayer right now. I feel like I took a little extra time there in the devotion. Um, and, um, I don't apologize for that, but I didn't have any notes for what I was talking about today. I just had some scriptures. And, uh, so I tend to ramble a little more when I'm talking off the top of my head, but let's go to prayer right now. And let's believe God to move in these uh, situations today and trust him for his continued work in our lives as we, de as we depend upon the declarations of his word. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the wonderful, 
mighty and matchless, all-powerful name of Jesus Christ. There is no name like that name, and we thank you, Lord, for revealing your name to us, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We're so thankful that we know you today, that we know you, Lord, the power of your blood, the power of um, your word, the power of your spirit dwelling within us today. And we do not depend upon our own uh, extremity today, God, our own limitations. We don't depend upon our own ability today, God, but we trust in you, Lord, to work through our lives. Uh, oh, hallelujah, to preserve us today, to make us what you desire for us to be. Lord, I know you desire for us to be better witnesses, for us to be uh, instant in season, out of season, to be warriors in prayer, to take up the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal weapons, but that are mighty through you to the pulling down of strongholds. And we do that today in Jesus' name. We put on your armor, oh God. Hallelujah. We're walking in your favor today. And we're praying in confidence today, Lord, because of the work of your blood and your word and your spirit in our lives. And so we pray in Jesus' name, according to your will, let these things be done. Not our will, Lord, but your will be done. And we know it's your will, Lord, to heal today and to deliver and to set free. And so we pray with great boldness for Carmen's brother, believing for healing in his body right now. Lungs be restored in Jesus' name. Breathing be restored right now in Jesus' name. We pray for Rue and for Robbie and for Kendra, and we speak healing to their lungs right now by the authority of the Word of God. We pray for Judy's mother, Lord, that your hand would be upon her as she goes through this surgical procedure on Monday. Lord, that everything would go according to plan, that the skin grafting will go well in Jesus' name, that they would get all of the cancer removed we pray, Lord, for Nicole today. You know what her need is as far as her health today. We believe for your touch for her and for Sandra Landers, for Cheryl, for Peggy Buford, for Regina Marlin, for the Williams family today. God, move and touch, we pray. Hallelujah, according to your ability. And we pray, God, for Brother and Sister Perkins this morning that you would continue to just strengthen and encourage them. We pray for James Graham and his family his grandfather, who's on hospice care right now, Lord. We pray, God, for Sally's daughter, that everything will go well today as she's nearing the point of delivering her baby. We pray that all would go well in Jesus' name. We believe for Alyssa and for her unborn child, God, for your protection upon that child. You see that defect in the heart. Hallelujah. We pray, God, that your perfect will would be done, that this would be repaired. Hallelujah. That this child would be healthy. In Jesus' name, we pray for Tasha, Lord, that you would help her through the, the complications that she's been experiencing in her pregnancy. We pray for those who are battling Parkinson's disease today. In Jesus' name, those who are dealing with dementia, those who are suffering with diabetes today, we believe for healing of our pancreas right now. In Jesus' name, those with back and spine problems, each and every name that we've called out in this prayer group today, we're believing God for their spines to be straightened, for their joints to be healed, for the discs to go back in place. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We pray for Dorinda today, for Gary, Lord, for these issues regarding knee surgery, her recovering from a surgery and him needing to have the surgery. God, we pray that you would touch them today. We pray for Mary McPeak today for healing of shingles. We pray for those in the nation of Chile who are suffering with COVID right now. We pray that it would be brought under control. We pray for Paul and Darla and for Ben Moore and for Jackie and Sharon Wilkerson that they would recover fully from COVID. We pray for those who are battling cancer today, Lord. Lord, for each and every one whose name we have called out in this prayer session today. Lord, we didn't just call those names uh, to bring them to the attention of our fellow prayer warriors, but we also called those names out uh, today, God, in your very presence. And we know that you heard every name. And we know, Lord, that you knew those needs before that we even asked about it. Uh, but, God, you wanted us to to 
call those names. You wanted us to bring them to our remembrance today and to bring them before your throne in confidence. Uh, we pray for Lorelei and Jenna and Tucker and Abram and Abel and Ellie Mae and baby Elsie. Lord, you see these children that are suffering from disease today. We speak the word of faith right now upon the authority of the word of God, by the blood of Jesus, by the stripes that were taken upon your back for our healing. We declare that healing right now over every affliction, over every disease in Jesus' name. We hold up Kenny Prenzel in our prayers today, believing for healing of his heart and restoration of his soul today. We pray for Vicki Medley, Lord, for her healing, for Jen Marlin, for Brother DeLott and Brother Riley March, who are battling with illness. We pray for Marcia and Terry and Michael dealing with stomach issues and other issues today. We believe for Sister Sullivan's health to be restored. We pray, God, for those who have spiritual needs today. We believe, God, for spiritual healing, for restoration, for infilling today of your spirit. Hallelujah. We believe today, God, for Josiah, for Cheryl's family member, for Pam Pulliam's children, for Mark and Caitlin, for Beulah's family. We pray for Carmen's daughter, Grace, for Barbara Owens, for Haley, Evie, Rose, Carl, and Connor, for Marcia's children and for her granddaughter, for our communities, Lord, that need revival, for Lori Arbo's mother, for Art Chandler. We pray for our Job Corps students. We pray for Judy and Mike's daughter, Jennifer, and for Judy's brother, Louis. We believe for Jennifer and Brenda's family. We pray for the Storms family. We pray for Adam and Heather today, for Terry's children, for Debbie's daughter, Jamie, and her family, and for Debbie's niece. We pray for Caroline's family, for Peggy's family today, God. You're moving in these needs today. You're restoring, oh God. You're drawing by your spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Do a special work in our home groups, the two home groups that are meeting this weekend. God, we pray your blessing and your favor. We pray that every guest in our home would be blessed in Jesus' name, that they would receive something from your word, that they would become connected to the church in a greater way. Hallelujah. We pray for those who are dealing with family issues right now. We lift up Annette and Dave, believing for healing of their marriage. We pray for Grace's best friend and her family as her parents are going through divorce. We pray for Brother and Sister Woody's family. Lord, that you would just strengthen them today, comfort their hearts, heal them, restore them, we pray. We pray for Marcia's family. You see the situation, Lord, that has broken their hearts for so long. We pray, God, that you would just reach down today and mend that situation. Oh, God, you have the answer. You are the answer today. We pray for Debbie's daughters, Jessica and Jamie, that you would move in their relationships. We pray for Angela's family. We thank you for all that you've already done in that situation. You brought that family back together. Hallelujah. You're doing such great things. We pray, God, today for the special needs that are going on in people's lives. You see Carol Dixon today as she's under the stress and the strain of moving out of her longtime home. We pray you would comfort her heart. Hallelujah. Give her fresh direction in Jesus' name. We pray for Elizabeth's son, Patrick. We pray for Dalton today. We pray for Nathan. We pray for the Stewart family. Lord, that each of their needs will be met, God, according to your design and plan for them. In Jesus' name we pray, and we give you thanks for hearing our prayers today, God. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for listening to us uh, and taking time for us. Who are we that you're mindful of us, oh God, but you, you are mindful of our needs, and you do care today, and we're so thankful that we know you. Hallelujah. Cleanse our hearts today. Help us to abide in your word that your blood can continue to work in our lives every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being a part of uh, Morning Prayer and Devotion and specifically for being a part of this devotional series about the blood of Jesus, which we've been talking about for, I guess, the better part of three weeks now. We'll be getting a new devotion on Monday morning. I hope that you'll join me then right here on Facebook Live at 7.30 a.m. God bless you in Jesus' name.